Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, uh, we're going to be starting our transformations unit. This unit and these next few videos are going to be all about transformations. Uh, so the first transformation that we're going to talk about is dilations. Um, so dilations are when we make something, a shape on a graph, either larger or smaller. In this section of transformations, we're going to be giving you a lot of formulas, if you will, rules to follow for specific types of transformations. It's really beneficial to learn the rules because you never know when you're going to have to go into a testing situation where you don't get a cheat sheet of the rules and there are quite a few of them. So it is a good idea to try your best to memorize them. So the first one we're going to learn is we are going to take a point, an xy point, any point, and it will become, that's kind of how this reads, xy becomes, in this case for dilation, the rule is k times x and k times y. Now k is the scale factor, okay? Um, so k is how big or how small we're going to make something. So here are the rules. If k is larger than 1, if k is greater than 1, so anything bigger than 1, 1 1.5, 2, 3, anything greater, then our shape is going to get larger in size. It's going to get bigger. Okay, but if k falls between 0 and 1, meaning it's a fraction or decimal less than 1, for example, 1 half, 1 third, uh, three-fourths, okay, um, 0.75. If it falls between zero and one, that means our shape uh, or picture is going to get smaller. So you'll be able to, once you get the hang of it, really quickly identify just by looking at it if something's going to get larger or smaller um, based on the scale factor. Uh, so coming back to the rule, so we're going to take that scale factor, which they'll give us in, the, in whatever problem they're asking you, and you're just going to multiply it by your x value and multiply it by your y value. All right, so let's see this in action. We're going to start over here. Our instructions say dilate this point, 2 comma 4, that's an xy point, by a scale factor of 3. Okay, so if 3 is my k in this instance. So I'm going to take the point 2 comma 4. All right, and I'm going to multiply each of these by 3. So that'll be 2 times 3, comma, 4 times 3. All right, and let's write our final answer. So 2 times 3 we know is 6, and 4 times 3 is 12. So notice that our numbers did get larger because our scale factor was greater than 1. 3 is greater than 1, so we went larger. Okay, now let's try this one. Dilate 3, 12 by a scale factor of 1 third. Okay, so we're going to take that original point, 3, 12. We're going to take the 3 and multiply it by 1 third. And we're going to take the 12 and multiply it by one third. Okay, now 3 times one third is just 1. Okay, 12 times one third is going to give us 4. So notice how our point became smaller because our scale factor was between 0 and 1. Okay, it was one third. Now let's see how this would look with an actual shape. So we've gone point by point, but now let's look at if I had a sequence of points, if I had an actual picture to work with. So my instructions say dilate triangle ABC, so here's triangle ABC, by a scale factor of 2. So hopefully you're noticing that 2 is larger than 1, which means my, si my, my triangle should get larger than it currently is, but we'll see. So um, I first need to figure out what are the points I'm working with, right? I need to lay out that information first. So we'll start with A. Point A is falls at 1, negative 2. So let me note that over here. 
a falls at 1, negative 2. b falls at 4, negative 1. c falls at 2, 3. Okay, so that's where my points currently are. So I'm going to follow this rule, remembering that my scale factor is 2. So I'm going to multiply each x and each y by 2 to get a new point. So this a is going to become, now the way we write this in math is we say a prime. So let's follow that rule. 1 times 2 is 2. And negative 2 times 2, that would give me negative 4. So that's going to be my new point for A. So let's do the same thing with B. So we'll call this B prime. So 4 times 2 is going to be 8. And negative 1 times 2 is going to be negative 2. All right, and now we'll do our new C. C prime is going to be 2 times 2 is 4, and 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, now let me graph my new image. You'll notice, you may have realized it, and I just realized it, that I've got an 8 here, but my graph only goes up to 6. That's okay, we're just going to estimate. I just made a careless error when I was making this. So let's do a prime would be at 2, negative 4. So 2 down 4. And we'll label that a prime. Okay, B, and I should note that labeling is so important, okay? If you just plotted a point there and you didn't label it, your teacher has no idea possibly where you got that point. So it is important to label every single point, and if it's prime, label it prime, okay, so that we can tell the difference between old A and new A, okay? So B prime, 8, negative 2. So I am going to have to kind of stretch this a little bit. I don't like doing that, but... Um, so I know 8 would be approximately here, negative 2 would be approximately here, and that is B prime. Now C prime would be 4, 6, so 4 and then up 6, and that is C prime. Okay, so I want to go ahead and connect my picture, my new triangle. Okay, now notice how my picture did get larger. Okay, so the blue we would call the pre-image, the black triangle we would call the image, and it did in fact get larger. It has doubled in size because we dilated by a scale factor of two. Okay, so I want you guys to try an example now. Dilate the point five comma eight by a scale factor of four. I will post the answer in the video description below this video. This has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.